know that they ride or die. Boy, I'm Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil. And today we're going to discuss a little bit about the Dallas Cowboys versus the Washington football team. Hey, I got it right. Anyway, so Dallas looked amazing in the beginning with the defense looking amazing through the whole game. And the offense only looking amazing in the first half. I mean, you kind of forgot about their woes because they were really moving the ball. And Dak looked like he was making some pretty good throws other than some of those interceptions. Something's going on injury-wise, and you can kind of tell that something's bothering him, and maybe the whole team is just kind of hiding it. But it looks like the earlier preseason game where he was kind of not throwing right, that stuff seems to be coming back. And honestly, you can't, unless you're a doctor and you're within the organization, you can only speculate really what's going on. But let's go off in the football terms and see what this team has to do offensively and, of course, defensively. Just got to keep it up. But let's look at the offense and see what we got to change. All right, so when we look honestly through the offensive side of the ball, there's a lot of problems that kind of just accumulate into a one big, huge problem. With the offensive line, Connor Williams, I like how they put him in the fullback. He looks a little bit more athletic than what McGovern's able to bring to that position, and I think that's what you're having in that left guard position. But they're going to kind of ride it out and see where these guys kind of help each other honestly mature in the sense of what McGovern and Biotis are doing within that center of that or offensive line. When you look at the next level, you look at Dak, and Dak honestly does not look accurate. He looks like he's making some decisions on very quick passes. He's trying to get it out quick to, to short passes compared to where earlier in the season he was really looking for that long pass. So I don't know if that's just the play calling within itself, but there's something definitely there. And I would, if I had to speculate, which honestly, anybody, if that's all they're doing. Unless you're a doctor within the organization, you really don't know what they're hiding. And this, even with HBO's whole hard knock, they were able to kind of show that, yeah, Dak had his injury in the ankle, but we hid it basically from the public that he had another surgery. So there's there's things there, and you know that stuff happens all the time, but you really honestly feel like they're really being dishonest and honestly being dishonest to themselves when you're putting a guy like Dak out there, and he could honestly have the same shoulder thing that he had back in July, and that's the reason why the inaccuracy. But you're hoping that that doesn't continue on because his artwork within his whole career in the NFL has been a really good thing, so I can't really judge him off the past month. But when you look at the next level, even in general, the play calling, I think when you previously in the beginning of the year when the Dallas Cowboys were running the ball, they would sweep a wide receiver in motion, kind of giving those linebackers an extra person to think about and maybe holding that step. So you no longer have that. So those running backs aren't getting that you know that basically that distraction of the linebackers and so the linebackers are really attacking giving no holes and honestly it's a very vanilla so you're it's almost like a tribute back to the jason garrett era where that's all they were doing was running up the middle or running to the side there was nothing else to it and so i think that's what kellen moore has kind of gotten away from and i think it might be more in the sense that he's trying to get people flowing and trying to get them back onto the same page as you see where gallup makes some of those cuts dak is throwing it very inaccurate even to me, CeeDee Lamb, I love CeeDee Lamb, but this guy, as much as he does something good, he does something bad on the opposite side. And I don't mean he's he's fumbling the ball. I mean he's dropping passes, very easy passes. And then the next play, he makes a great catch. So it's hard to, to, to watch that sometimes because he does need to find that balance. And I mean in the sense not dropping a pass and then catching a pass. I mean more in the balance of let's make sure we do this consistently, that kind of balance. So balance out this offense because Dak honestly needs this help right now because he's not making those good reads because maybe he feels a little bit rushed from the offensive line. Again, speculations, you really can't honestly say what exactly is going on, but all of it together, honestly, I think is just eating away. Play calling, Dak not making the decision, the line not blocking for him, wide receivers dropping passes or just in general not making the right route whether they're breaking outside when they should be breaking inside. So there's a combination of a bunch of stuff definitely happening there. And that's why people talk about we need to get our flow. We need to get our rhythm is because honestly, this team has not played together a lot because there has been a lot of backups playing. So when all that stuff gets pushed to the side, these games really, you're, you're lucky you're not playing against Tampa Bay, the Rams, Arizona. Oh, that's right. We got to do. We got Arizona. But in general, luckily, you're not playing against a lot of tough competition. You can kind of start to iron out these wrinkles and stuff. So let's look at the defensive side of the ball and let's celebrate this victory because it was an ugly win, but it was still a win that pushes ahead in the division. So you should extremely be happy as a Dallas Cowboy fan. But it's understandable to be worried if you're also a Dallas Cowboy fan because of the offense and what they've been doing. So again, let's push over to the defensive side of the ball. So 
we honestly, as we talk about the defensive side of the ball for the Dallas Cowboys, there's so many things to get excited about, but the top five guys are on there are Parsons, Parsons, Gregory, Gregory, and Lawrence. Those three guys honestly playing together finally. And when you look at the beginning of the season to this game right before it, they honestly played just like 28 snaps, and which is not a lot. But to see these guys finally play together for a whole game and just get all this type of pressure on the Washington, honestly, whatever their names are. But it doesn't matter because Dallas's defense was just really bringing it to him. And, and Gregory made an appearance, and Lawrence made an appearance, and Parsons was just kind of the star of the show. And it was just amazing to watch your rookie honestly be the front candidate for defensive player of the year not only rookie of the defensive player of the year but again defensive player of the year and the last time somebody did that was a guy named lawrence taylor back in the 80s so to watch this guy just kind of do his thing i'm just amazed every time because to me he's going to get bigger he may not get faster but he's already a fast guy but he is going to get bigger he's going to get stronger his technique is amazing to watch him go around guys sorry yeah another 50 to 60 pounds over him but he's still really manhandling people and really getting pressure on that quarterback. And so to watch him in the linebacker position, also he gets more tackles than those other stars in the NFL like Miles Garrett, TJ uh, Watt. You know, those guys are amazing, but he's doing it from multiple positions and, and honestly just beating his man almost every single time. So even when you double team him, he's really making that pressure uh, still. So watching other guys kind of step up around him it, it was amazing to watch but now to see stars around him like gregory and lawrence you can't double team everybody unless you're just going to have one guy run out there and try to get open against our secondary so it, it is again last week i told you that you know washington was going to score off a big chunk plays and that's exactly what happened a big chunk play they score our offense, like I said, was going to give them a pick six, and that's why our defense really needed to step up. And this defense can win a championship, and that's what defenses do, win championships. But they need to stay healthy. They need to stay away from the injury bug, and that's going to be the main concern around this defense. Can they be consistent? Because can the guys that are making those pressures and making those plays stay available to you? So that's going to be the question going forward into this push, this NFC East battle that we're going to have to go through sprinkled in with a tough competitor in arizona that's going to be looking for that number one seed so they're competing against also guys like green bay and the rams and yes mathematically we are still in that number one seed hunt but i really honestly wouldn't put us in that category with those three because yes they're playing some really good football and right now we're not playing the best offensively but again those guys weren't in that same boat a month ago as well too so offenses defenses they all change within the nfl so where will this team be a month from now that's going to be the big question going into it are we going to be healthy we're going to get guys like tyron smith that's going to be out for this upcoming game healthy and ready for the push through the playoffs because i know this team can definitely get these upcoming wins with washington needing a loss or dallas getting a win to push us into the division champs and also into the playoffs so again i'm primetime phil i'm excited about this victory and you should be honestly too even though it was a very ugly victory so thank you for the likes i appreciate all the support but don't forget to always ring that bell